Hello everyone and welcome to another NAB Tech tutorial. Today we're going to be learning the Pages software which is by Apple and which is included in all new and old Mac purchases. The software is developed by Apple and is very simple to learn, but this tutorial will not only teach you the basics, it will also go through most of the advanced features. So make sure to stick to the end to learn all about Pages. So the first thing we're obviously going to do is launch the software. The icon looks like this. It's a sheet of paper with a pencil. You can click on it and it will launch the Pages uh, iCloud menu. So from here you can see all your documents available in your iCloud uh, storage space. Um, obviously, if it's your first time, you won't have any documents. You can also make a local document, which will be saved on your computer's hard drive, and that's what we will be doing today. To do so, go to the top and click on File, New. In here, uh, it opens the Template Selection menu, where you can choose a template or start with a blank template and do it yourself. So, as you can see, there are many templates, uh, starting with reports and all the way up to certificates, cards, flyers and posters, resumes, and more. So select what seems good to you or go with a blank template and do it yourself. You can double click it or select choose. Now, once you've chosen your template or the blank template, you will get the menu, which is the text processing menu and the document editing menu. So you can always go full screen if you'd like by going view and enter full screen. So this is the basic menu you'll get with every document that you open in Pages. So this is the menu bar up here, and as you can see, there are many features that are easy to understand and use thanks to the icons that Apple has put. In here, you can choose the view, so you can show thumbnails if you have multiple pages, as you can see here. You can also view comments, which we'll talk about later on how to add comments in the first place. You can show find and replace, which is a search box menu that you can move around as well, where you can look up a certain word or phrase in the document itself. Uh, so you can find and replace as well, which we'll talk about later as well. So in this same view menu right over here, you also have the options to show a ruler, which will help you um, center your objects, which we'll also talk about later, and hide comments or show word count. Show word count will be useful if you're trying to keep track of how many words you're writing or if you have a minimum word count that you want to achieve. You can always disable these features by clicking on the same place you clicked in the first place, so hide word count, hide page thumbnails, and etc. To start with, of course, you can start typing in the document itself, which will type in the center of the document. You can choose your alignment over here, so you can go with the left alignment, select the text like that, and you can go with the center, right, or fill alignment. In the same menu, you can choose the font right over here. So if, for example, if I type a word, I can choose a font. There are multiple fonts included with the Mac itself, but you can download more from the internet or from a CD, depending on how you get them. You can also choose thickness. So this font does only include uh, regular, but some fonts include bold and thin, like this one. So you can see you have light or a light oblique, which is uh, some sort of italic, but we're just going to go with regular. You can also select bold, italic, and underlined which is an additional option. You can show advanced options, but these are only if you really want to customize the look and feel of your text. So you can choose ca character spacing, which will space the letters more, baseline shift, baseline capitalization, which is easy to use if you have a large document that you have not capitalized correctly, it'll just do it for you. So let's say I want it all caps, it'll do it for me instead of having to retype the whole word. You can also edit ligatures, character fill color, outline, strike through, and shadow. Finally, here we have the colors. So of course, you can open the color wheel, which is also an additional window. And you can simply choose a color over here. Character styles is also available over here. So these are quick styles. If you don't want to go into the customization process, you can just click here and it'll do it for you. Finally, here we have spacing and bullets and lists. So bullets and lists is pretty simple. You can choose over here which type of bullet or list you want, and then some options for each individual option. 
uh, are down here. So for example, if I choose bullet, I can choose the color of it, the size of it, and some more options. I'll just turn that off for now. On top spacing, that's the typical line spacing. So if I have multiple paragraphs or if I have two lines that are under each other, I could select them and choose my spacing. So this will make it more the lines, of course, you can choose lines at least exactly between if you want a specific sort of measure. You can also choose specific before and after distances that, that can come in handy if you're editing a document. And so that's pretty much it for the right hand corner window over here, which is all about editing the text style. Now we also have layout, which is a different um, option over here, which can let you create columns indents, tabs, borders, and rules. So columns are typically simply columns that you can do to separate your document into three, two, or even more columns. You can add indents, which you can also do by pressing the tab button or by going to this window right over here. You can add tabs, uh, decimal characters, the full spacing, and under that you have borders and rules, which is pretty advanced, but you can also do that. It's uh, different types of lines you can add on your document that are not shapes, but that are sort of on the line itself and are part of the text. We also have background color, which will color the text space around the space. This is for a none. So anytime you're choosing a color for any option and there is the option to disable it, this will be the icon you will see. It is sort of a red bar on a white space, which means none. So instead of choosing the white, you would choose none because if you had an object behind it, the white would show, which is not something you'd want. You can also select more for even more options, but these are pretty advanced, so we won't get into those. Now that you've got this sort of understanding of this right hand corner, we'll just go through the menu quickly. So we have a zoom option, which pretty much zooms in the document for you to get a good C or a overall view. So 100% would show your document as is. You can insert a page break, section break, column break, which would add a page or a section or a column. Uh, you can insert a page number on the bottom of the page or on top of the page. You can insert a page count, and you can insert a date and time. So they'll pretty much insert them as text. So what you would do is you would select where you'd want them. So as you can see here, I clicked on this area, and the software automatically suggests me to put a page number right over here. So if I'd want to do this manually, I'd go to Insert and Page Number, and it will add it for me. I can also add a date and time and page count. So if you select the document itself, you can also add a footnote and for other situations, you can add these more advanced features right here. Uh, we can add a table, of course, which you can select different styles of and then you can customize them yourself. So the customization is pretty simple. It would um, be in this side over here also, so we won't get into that. You can add a chart, which is which they have pretty nice templates for. So you have a 2D chart, a 3D, and an interactive chart, which is new in the newest version of Pages, which is also available with all updates. So you can go over here and select the one you like and customize it as you would customize a table on this side, of course, again. So uh, for each object you insert, and again, an object can be a table, a chart, a shape, or a text box, other than the text that's already in the document, you will get um, specific options and features on this sidebar over here for the object that you're choosing. So for example, if I had two objects in my document, such as a table and a chart, I could select the one I want to edit and it will show it in the right hand over here. So I want to edit the table, I'll get it over here. And if I want to edit the chart, I'll get it over here. Deleting an object is fairly simple. For most of them, it'll just be a click and to press the delete button. So for these two, it's like that. And for other objects, there may be different ways, but it's usually simply the delete button. We can also add shapes. So you'll get to choose a shape. And you also have the options to draw a shape with a pen, which is a simple uh, feature where you click and you select multiple points to your shape and you close it up like so. Uh, you can also insert media, which would be from your Photos app um, included in your Mac. 
So if you'd like to insert an image or other movie or audio file, you just click over here and you'll browse to your computer's hard drive and memory to find the file you want to insert within the document itself. Now we were talking about documents when we were looking right over here. So here is the uh, button where you would add a comment about something. So if you're working on this document with a colleague or um, someone you're working with on the document itself, you can select an object or a word and add a comment about it. So you comment here and you write um, your comment right here. To delete a comment, you simply select it and click delete. So this was a fairly simple introduction to the menu bar up here. Um, to end it off, we have the share button, which would let you share the document, send a copy via mail, messages, airdrop, or notes, and share a link via iCloud, which would typically save the document to your iCloud and send a link to the person you're trying to share the document with. Tips would be if you'd like to learn more about pages, which since you've watched this video will not be necessary, I hope. On the top right corner over here, we have format and document. So this will let you close the sidebar over here, which I would not recommend since editing the objects is very useful in pages, so might want to keep this to the side, but you can always remove it. And you can, you can click document to edit specific document uh, options. So document, again, you can disable it. Uh, you have two sections to that. You have document and section. So you can click in document and select the paper size and printer. So if you're printing later, you can select the printer and the size depending on uh, your printer as well. You can select the page orientation, so landscape or portrait, depending on what you're designing, and uh, turn on and off the header and footer, document body, and edit the document margins. These are some advanced features here, right here. You can click on section to edit the section itself as well. You can insert page number uh, depending on the style of page number you want. For example, if this was page two, it'll say page two of one. Uh, instead of going, like we said before, over here, you could just do it from here and it'll do it on all the pages. Uh, you can tell the number to start at or continue from pre previous section. You can create a new section right here as well. So we'll just close this up. Finally, let's finish this tutorial off with going through this menu bar up here. So this is the taskbar you have on your Mac and it depends on each software you've opened. And so this is the specific one for pages. Let's look at that. If you click pages, you'll get an about pages um, window, which will tell you your version. So the if you have the most up-to-date version you should be on version 5.6.2 by the time I make this video so it's possible that it has been updated and you'll have some license agreement and acknowledgements which are pretty advanced as well you can look at your preferences which is typically a, a menu where you can select uh, general preferences about the software itself and not about the document. So this is a point where people get messed up sometimes. So this is about the software itself and not about the document. The options are pretty basic, so you can get around them pretty easily. We also have a provide pages feedback option, which lets you uh, provide feedback to Apple about their software. You can look at services over here, which are advanced, but simple to use. So if you're looking into capturing uh, part of the screen and putting it into the software, you'd click here, importing images and more. You can hide pages, the software itself, or other softwares to work on pages alone. Quit pages, of course, is to close the program. Make sure you save your document before closing the program. It will prompt you to save it even if you close it uh, without doing it on purpose. Uh, if you go to edit a uh, file you have multiple options you can create a new document open a document so this will let you locate it on your Mac itself you can um, open a recent document that you've opened so if you're just opening the pages app you can look at documents you've recently opened you can close save the document to a location duplicate rename so whenever you have three dots after a command it's that you have to enter further options so if you're opening document you have to choose which document you're opening if you're opening a new document you have to choose the template type you if you're saving a document you have to choose where to save it to so the two little dots indicate further um, input you have to provide duplicate would duplicate the document rename move to revert to if you have previous versions of the document that are available, this is where you'd get back to them 
or a browse all versions would let you see all the versions. Export to would let you export to PDF, Word, plain text, EPUB, or Pages 09 software. Now, the most useful feature I find here is the Word feature. So if you're using a PC, the word processing software is Word, typically. It's provided by Microsoft. Now, Microsoft also has Word for the Mac, but if you're using Pages and you're looking to convert a Pages document to a Word file, you can directly do this now through Pages itself. So simply go to File, Export to, and select Word. This will make it compatible with Microsoft Word, which is mostly used on PCs. PDFs are a universal type of file that you can use on most computers, and it'll open easily. These are other advanced features that you can export to as well. You can convert to a page layout and see advanced features over here. You can set a password to encrypt the file and save as template the specific file you're using. So if you think you're going to use this file again to create a new document, you'd click here. Page setup and print are also over here. Edit is simple features, um, this time specifically about an object. So if I'd select an object or text, it would um, make some features available. So you have cut, copy, paste, paste and match style, paste formula. All these are to duplicate or to remove an item. Again, delete, you could just click the delete button and copy. Um, is command C and cut is command X. So you can see all the features in this menu bar uh, have their keyboard shortcut on the right. So you can go ahead and learn those if you're looking to make your experience quicker. Um, other e uh, features are available down here. You can find, uh, you can spell, uh, see the spelling and grammar of the word you've selected. Uh, substitutions, transformations, speech, which, which, which typically is speech recognition, simply and start dictation would let you command the software using dictation which is um, an accessibility feature and emoji and symbols would open the emoji menu where you can add an emoji right here finally uh, in the edit menu there is a there are other advanced features such as endnote citations and more that are easy to understand as well but are for specific situations only and then insert menu you can insert different objects again most of them right here are present in the menu bar, so you won't need to go through here, but they're also available up there. You can add other um, files as well by clicking Choose and selecting from your Mac. Format, again, available over here. So if you close the right-hand signed window over here, you can just access it from here and look at advanced features over here. Arrange, also uh, specifically for an object. If you bring forward an object, you're bringing it um, to show in front of another object that's behind it. Other features are also available down there. View is um, the way you view your documents. You can adjust zoom and other options such as comments and changes if you want to show them or not. Again, these features are available in the menu bar most of the time. They're just also present up there. Share, again, down here and up there. And window will let you see the windows you've opened. So if I've opened a um, find or place window, it will show down here and I can close it. Help, again, after this tutorial, we hope that you will not need the help section of the software. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped you and you're, you will easily get started with pages. Uh, if you like this video and you need more tutorials, or if you have a suggestion for a tutorial, make sure to tell us in the comments and we'll get to that if we can. And please subscribe if you want to uh, hear about our new videos. It really helps us out. So if you've, it's free, so click the button down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really tells us that you've liked it and it encourages us to make more videos. So make sure you click the thumbs up. And thank you for watching. See you next time.